The police. When you look into your rearview mirror and you see a policeman, does that make you feel safe or nervous? How about when you are standing near a policeman at a diner or at a 7-Eleven? While having a visceral fear of a policeman, the rational individual will probably conclude that the police as they exist today are necessary, as uh, he has a good reason to believe this. The 1919 Boston police strike and the 1974 ba Baltimore police strike showed what happens when a pre-existing police force suddenly ceases to perform their function. Right? You have a spike in crime. Some may cite these events as demonstrating the necessity for a state police force, but at most it demonstrates that police are necessary in certain areas and need to be provided by someone, be it a state or private agency. What's more is that the state monopoly on police services in those areas made those strikes so effective. If a city had multiple police agencies, the, strike, uh, the striking of any one agency wouldn't be nearly as damaging. Right? The, the other agencies would be a little bit overstretched, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. And state police protection has all the problems of any coercive monopoly. A coercive monopoly is just that, a monopoly, except that the people are forced to pay. They are coerced into paying. So while a monopoly on a market is still regulated by the fact that people can choose not to buy the monopolized good and buy substitutes or buy a whole lot less or whatever, a coercive monopoly doesn't even give you that option. Like say you have a monopoly on shoes. You have a single shoe company that sells all the shoes. You can choose not to buy shoes or you can choose um, to buy less shoes or something. I mean you don't have to uh, pay into the monopoly. You can find ways to either not feed the monopoly or feed the monopoly less. With a coercive monopoly, like which is like a state program saying you have to pay for these shoes and we'll give you these shoes, but you have to pay, right? They're not even regulated by that. Like they, they, they right? You have to pay. And it's same with police. So, not only are the individuals not allowed to buy police protection from other firms, right? And there's and there's no competition, but must pay for the state services, even if they would be willing to opt out and have no police protection. And if this and it is this dynamic that leads to the abuse by the course of monopoly, right, which is maintained by ideology and violent enforcement at the margins. Manifestation of this are non-responsiveness to calls, state sadism on the part of the officers conducting searches uh, which violate the police agency's stated code of conduct, uh, the impositions of petty fines for their own sake, and of course the war on drugs, right, the war on, the war on a substance that you put in your body. Much of these abuses are regulated by simple human decency on the behalf of the officers and by the uh, potential of media scandal, but are not regulated by competition. Also keep in mind that a police service is limited relatively to relatively public areas. Um, police cannot realistically protect one from a home invader, and so individuals are better off with an alarm system and a gun for that. And while the police can act as a deterrent, they cannot protect a shop from a well-coordinated raid. For example, if some thieves were to cut off the telephone uh, line from a 7-Eleven and somehow jam the cell phone signal, uh, the police would not be alerted. And police also cannot prevent crimes of passion where the perpetrator is in a state of mind where the police re retaliation is not a deterrent. Police can deter crime by punishing the criminal after the fact and prevent crimes in relatively public places at relatively public times, and sometimes not even that. The patrol duties of relatively public areas are already done by private cops today. Malls, large shopping centers, theme parks, and various other uh, po privately owned public places right, hire their own cops. And in a state and society where firms don't pay any taxes and thus have the necessary funds to hire private cops, along with the increased necessity to have private cops, I can only predict that firms will hire more policemen to protect public areas. And this includes the policing of roads, uh, neighborhoods, and highways. Uh, for neighborhood police, homeowners, um, in order to acquire title to a home, would be required to pay a fee for the police services, along with fire protection services, uh, the roads in the area, 
right? There'd be a way to, to deal with the maintenance of roads, right? Maintenance of sewage and power lines, right? And that, that would be part of the fee of owning a home in that area, right? If you want to buy a home in that area, you have to agree to pay uh, the public utilities and services fees. And, and police protection would be one of these things. The best deterrent, of course, is individual gun ownership, right? The best deterrent to crime is individual gun ownership. Even if not every household owns a gun, um, knowing that about half of all houses have guns, um, and, and of course the potential home invader wouldn't know which half, uh, that would be enough to deter home invaders. Right? And if one is not predisposed to shootouts, and, uh, a preset intruder elimination system could be installed. And there are lots of things you can do when there are no uh, legal ramifications for home defense. Right? If, there, if, there aren't, if you're not worried about you know, being... Uh, sentenced to prison for for uh, unnecessary force and retaliation. Uh, there's there are ways you can keep yourself safe that are just not options today, such as having like a robotic gun system, gun turret system. What about the poor? Well, first off, the poor today don't see uh, receive much in the way of police protection anyway. <laughs> um, see no go zones. Areas where the police are supposed to patrol but don't. And, uh, and see the Watts and L.A. riots where the police simply formed a perimeter uh, to prevent the rioters from causing damage to the homes uh, of the more politically connected neighborhoods. Right? The fall off of, of uh, that would occur when going into a state of the society, especially if there was some time to prepare and it wasn't just a spontaneous removal like with the police strikes, uh, wouldn't be as horrific as most believe. Lower income neighborhoods would, in my estimation, have to fall back on communitarianism. That is, they would have neighborhood patrols and the like, right? And have their, their shotgun squads. Uh, this is what many neighborhoods are doing now, though with no gun laws, these patrols would be more effective and they could be more public, right? And this is also something that was done um, during the whole civil rights uh, debacle, you, black neighborhoods would, would come together to form uh, shotgun patrols, uh, make sure no one was getting uh, attacked in their neighborhood. Now, if you have private police agencies and communitarian police patrols, what is to prevent these agencies from becoming another state or even going to war with each other? Well, first off, private police agencies would not be able to extract funds involuntarily unless they developed a uh, sufficient ideological support, which I do not believe is possible for a stateless society today, as I will explain in a later section of this book. And because wars are very expensive, uh, if a police agency went to war with another agency, they would have to raise rates. In light of this, the customer would uh, leave to another non-warring agency to the extent that they wanted to save money because war is expensive. If they see the rates go up and they go to a new agency, they go, oh, this is too expensive, I'm subscribed to another agency. If the police attempted to maintain their customers, perhaps over a contiguous or, you know, pretty much contiguous area through force, they would be imposing a marginal state, right? Trying to impose a state by force alone, which is exceedingly difficult to maintain if history is any guide. Let's take the worst case scenario, a single police agency that has a global monopoly. They're benevolent for a while because that's the only way they can become a monopoly, but then they decide to raise rates and force customers to pay and violently prevent any competition from forming. They become a coercive monopoly and a highly marginal state. This coercive monopoly would then have to face any communitarian rev revolts that occurred in response. And these communitarian armies would have widespread public support and would be able to wage a guerrilla war. And as the communitarian army tied down the monopolistic state army, individuals would begin to not pay their taxes at precisely the time the state, state forces needed them in their war against the communitarians. And remember, the population in a stateless society is extremely well armed. Yes, this is speculation, and a lot of it is speculation, but I'm working from the assumptions that I do not believe require much faith. And so this monopolistic agency would have to fight a guerrilla war, but unlike the Soviet Union and the United States, this agency wouldn't have some giant ideological support to fall back on. Um, they wouldn't have a tax base which produced a surplus that could be spent fighting wars abroad uh, because there would be no back home. It would be like the U.S. Army trying to occupy Iraq 
with only the funds they could extract from the Iraqis themselves. For these reasons, police protection is not something uh, that must be under the sole purview of the state. In fact, by granting a coercive monopoly on police protection, you end up with what we see today.